Hi friends, I am Shramana and welcome back to my channel Sparkling Future. Today we will discuss about future keyword in Scala. Before starting with the today's topic, I request all of you to subscribe to my channel and also please like, share, comment and hit the bell icon for the latest video notifications. Thank you. So future is a parallelism API that is provided in Scala core API. So these are extremely useful when you when you start working on the concurrent programming model or parallel programming if you wanted to do then you have to use future so i mean it's a future is a placeholder object for a value uh, that may or may may not yet exist yet okay so these are mainly used when you work on multiple programs in parallel and you, are, you have to wait for the execution of the program or if uh, program one uh, uh, output will be used in the program two. then the program two will, will have to wait right for the other one so in such kind of uh, parallel threads are used in such cases we use the future okay so for using the future we have to import I've just created a sample uh, worksheet okay so we have to use color dot concurrent and uh, we can create future like this okay you can simply say future one plus one I mean I'm simply giving okay so it is giving error saying that it needs uh, execution context so future uses uh, execution context which is responsible for executing the computations and this execution context is similar to the executor which is like uh, free to execute the computations in a new thread or in the pulled thread okay so now for that reason we have to import this uh, execution context dot implicits dot global import statement we have to use okay so uh, why we use global here is execution context dot global is used for uh, managing the limited number of threads as per the allowable uh, parallelism as per the memory uh, availability in your cluster okay in the sense while running how many threads per uh, program we can use that that which will, will be there right num threads or max threads min threads so that can be for that purpose we use this thing and here I have mentioned global because I'm just uh, taking the uh, default uh, global uh, execution context whereas you can also use your own execution context as well but it's always better okay to use the global when you don't have any other source to do that okay so now um, so I'll just uh, comment this line out and uh, let's uh, see how uh, we can see the difference between this uh, I mean how we can wait for a uh, thread to complete something like that in programmatically so let's say there is one variable which is uh, of uh, I mean I'm, I'm assigning the future variable to this one so just for the demo purpose I'm using the this uh, thread dot sleep okay but as per the uh, best practices uh, it's better not to use thread dot sleep more okay we can use await or something I will explain you that as well so now let's say there is another program another thread which is uh, dependent on the first thread so I'll say map for each value multiply by 5 okay so now if you see here this is in the future it is waiting for something which is one second it is waiting after it is completed then it should execute this one okay that is the meaning of that one so now we will just see just for our uh, to understand how exactly it works I'll just uh, print these things so that we'll come to know what is the value of it and whether it's completed or not and a to dot well and again we will say thread dot sleep of 5 seconds ok and after 5 seconds I will just print the same things to see what is the value of this before and after the thread this, this is just to show you that uh, if one process is waiting then what will be the status after the completion of that what will be the status because future is mainly for the parallel programming concurrent processing right so concurrent processing means multiple uh, programs will be running parallelly so 
you have to make sure that everything every thread is successfully uh, working and sending back the results and we are able to capture the results properly okay so now i am just saving this because this is worksheet i am saving it and if you notice it is waiting for the 5 seconds you can see this one side right so if you see here first one future not completed because it it's it, the initial status when when you submit the future it's not completed okay which is uh, like initial one and if you see here yes uh, is completed when we ask it showed false because it is still not yet completed and for the value none because it's not completed for the first one second it's not yet completed and uh, because it is the a2 is depending on the result of the a1 this is also false and none but after 5 seconds it waited for 5 seconds we could see right that uh, processor running here so a1 value is true yes it is value available and the value is 10 10 is the one that we have passed here and once it is successful it became true because a2 is depending on the a1 and it has multiplied 10 into 5 and it has given the value as sum of success so this is another state okay so now let's say this is success right so let's see some failure as well so let's say okay default failure option is this only i could get it so now let's say thread dot sleep of 5000 let's print the value So when I say this, save, it's first, okay, here we have the 5000, right, I mean 5 seconds, so, so now it is printed, now here you can see that processor is running here, and now if you see, it is still future not completed because we just created it, if it is in the REPL, we can clearly see that after some time it will be completed, okay, and uh, for the failure, I mean of course it is a failure because we are dividing by 0 uh, and it will give what is the exception inside the sum of uh, it takes the option class and uh, inside the option it is returning the failure and it is uh, giving why it is failure so initially we saw the state uh, that is not yet completed and then it is uh, we can see that uh, it is completed and after the completion it can it can be either success or failure so we have seen both the cases okay so here if you notice even for success or failure it is taking the option classes whether it's a sum of uh, success for uh, uh, success and sum of failure for the uh, wrong uh, calculations okay and also in uh, usually we don't use thread dot sleep as I said right so we usually use uh, await dot ready and await dot result okay these two are the ones usually we will use it so for using that we have to import uh, import scala dot concurrent dot duration yes. or otherwise we have to give proper value here so uh, see uh, this await dot ready is there right this is used for future to be resolved before continuing with the further processing okay and uh, this await result we can actually see that it can wait for the result instead of uh, printing like this we can say that val a4 await dot result instead of this uh, thread dot slip we will say await dot result and we will say a3 dot and we should also mention uh, how uh, comma how many seconds like 5 dot seconds like that we have to mention how much time it has to wait okay okay so this is how we will use the await dot result and await dot ready in the uh, real time environment instead of uh, giving the thread dot sleep and all that so if you see here it is a arithmetic uh, exception because we we have uh, used this for this result right so this one is given here okay so 
uh, this is uh, what is the future in Scala. This is very very useful when you are working with the parallel programming. Okay, hope uh, this is useful to you friends. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more interesting learnings. Thank you.